Hello everyone and welcome to the World Explorers podcast where I am joined Woo! Yeah, where I am joined by Isaac who also has a lot of energy today for some reason. Uh if you're new to this podcast, pretty much what it is is we take a prompt and we build an entire world around whatever that prompt would be. I never know what the prompt is be. Half the time Isaac doesn't know what it is and we never know where we're going to end up, but it's usually amazing and yeah, that's that's the premise. Okay, so for today, uh, I know that we've briefly talked about this in the past when we made our uh, Mirror Realm okay. video where there's the... Yeah, anyway, yeah. so in that video, I mentioned, oh, well, what if there's, like, these two parallel realities that are exactly the same, but everything's backwards, you're like, no, that's been overdone. Well... Are we are I we doing the overdone today? We're gonna be doing the overdone, but okay. it's got a little bit of a twist that I haven't quite fully worked out in my head yet as to how it works because there's a lot of well, that's, to that's what I'm here then for. I said, yeah, I'm like, you know what? I'll save it for the video so we can work it out. Anyway, so the twist is that you've got these two worlds that are exactly the same, but uh. They are constantly influencing, influencing each other, and you have one you know, one side that is supposed to basically be pure good, while the other one is pure evil, and the influence that they cause on each other is what causes one side to actually perform e evil acts, like you know, individuals perform perform evil acts, and the other one is performing who would be evil people to do good acts. So now, what so what's this sounds like? Okay, when you say that, I don't know why, but my thought is you have a person and they've got you know the angels on the shoulders and but instead they're yes. just two mirrors and you're looking Pretty at either much. mirror and one's got you doing the evil thing and one's got you doing the good thing and I guess they're battling out. So does that mean there's like two separate worlds and then there's the world where it actually happens like where one is chosen? No. No. No, there is no, uh, there is no in between spot. They are both directly influencing influencing each other, but are unaware of each other. Now, this might go into a little bit of story building, but I was thinking, what would happen if one person, or rather two people, I guess, from the two, uh, two separate worlds who were the same person, met each other? Well, first we have to talk about how this world even works. Like how how does it influence each other? And stuff. Like, what, how how does how how does because that's that's the thing I'm struggling to wrap my brain around. Because so what you seem to be suggesting is in this evil world you're prone to do evil things, in the good world you're prone to do good things, but occasionally for some reason you just out of the blue do good things in the evil world and evil things in the other world just because of the other world's influence, but you don't know how that influence works. It's not like out of the blue. It's okay. they are, uh, it's they are both constantly at all times uh, pushing each other to do good and evil things, uh, which is kind of like like for example, let's say um, you're going, yeah, uh, you're just walking along, and someone throws an insult at you, and now you have the choice: do you? Uh, choose to do the evil thing and, you know, go uh, beat this person to death, or do you choose to just leave him alone, walk by, or do you choose to treat him with kindness and give him a cookie? Uh, this is not the greatest example in the world. Yeah. But basically, in that instant, when you have to make a choice, both sides are pulling and pushing at each other uh, to influence you one way or the other. And there's a chance that you could do good, or you could do evil in an instant. So, but Isaac, and that's, Isaac, this Isaac, is a constant thing. Isaac, yes. this still sounds better like my example with a, the main world and then these two evil and good worlds being the mirror dimensions and one of them wins out. Because I don't get... Because so otherwise, what you have are mirrors that are going on the exact same pace place. There's no variation between them. It's just supposedly one's more evil than the other and one's more good. But you don't even know which mirror is which because they're still going on the same path and that's kind of boring. Other ah, but this is the thing. 
once they meet. Like, once two people from the different uh, worlds meet, what happens? Because I was thinking, like, this could be an event where suddenly uh, that connection is either severed or weakened. uh, uh, Because now, once they become aware of each other... uh, the, uh, uh, basically, they are uh, they start doing their own individual actions, yep. and they have very little influence over each other. Yeah, and then but... I was also thinking to myself, well, if that were to happen, what would these two people do? Like, I know you want the story, but like, at, this, I, I, at the same time, you also have to ask the question, like, why, why, why does this thing even happen? Why are there two realms that are exactly the same, but they're mirrored? Like, they're not even mirrored. They're just the exact same worlds, and you're just continuing on the same path. And, yeah, like, there's, there's no way well, for... Why do we I, have one world that doesn't go... That only has one path? Why... Yeah. Do we have? Yeah, but I don't think we world? have. I don't think we have a world that's going on the exact same path of us, except that person's thoughts are more evil. I mean, like it doesn't like it doesn't make sense to me how there can be an evil and good world, but they're doing the exact same thing, and there's no variance except this one occasion where they they realize the other world exists and everything falls apart. Like it, the world itself doesn't seem doesn't seem like something. It doesn't make sense that it would exist. Is where I'm struggling. Like, why Why does this exist, is the question I'm asking you. I'm gonna say that there was a mirror god who created the mirror realms. Yeah, but just, it's not even entertaining. It's just now you have... It's like you buy two TVs so you can watch the same sports game on both TVs. Like, why? You just... Th- that's the person you stare at and say, you have an issue, and you're boring, and we're no longer friends because I don't get this, and you lock, leave the house. Okay. Okay, so okay, you want to make it interesting? Okay. Yes, so, I do. <laughs> you have so you have uh, the two characters. Keep in mind, one is evil, one is good, but they are still the same person. Uh-huh. They still have the same desires, uh-huh. uh, interests. They know the same people and uh-huh. everything. Now, even I- I- even if they are both uh, like opposites in terms of morals, they can still desire the same thing. Now, let's say uh, that they wanted a thing. Now they can start working together in creative ways to achieve said thing uh, because uh, in multiple different ways. One is that you're in two place, uh, places at once. Like, I'm thinking this could be how it starts off. Maybe you can be in two places at once uh, influencing uh, the two different worlds. Maybe they, uh, unintentionally they are causing a lot of destruction because what one side has to do, generally the other side also has to do. Um, and so that can make things look weird if one side sees a person and the other side does not. So, um, but, okay. But, so, uh, but let's, is, what? I know, I, I'm still thinking like the story would make more sense and like people would be more on board of it if it was the two sides but they're they're competing for their path to be the true path. And okay, there is that fine. Let's I'm just, go I'm with just... the cliche shoulder angel overdone. No, evil no, demon no, no, no. That's, that's that. not what this is, though. What this is, okay, there are three worlds. There's, I guess we'll call it our world, the world where it's definite, it's set in stone, this is what happens. And then there are two other worlds. There's the world where the most evil can happen, and the world where the most good could happen, and they're constantly influencing this middle world. And at the end of the day, like at a set time, the other two worlds get set back to match up with that center world and are stuck like that. So it's like a quest to influence. Each world is trying to compete with each other to influence the main world. Okay, so... If uh, one world were to do an all good thing and the other one were to do an all evil thing, what determines the outcome? Like, like which what determines the outcome in the main world? That's that's a that's a good question. I haven't I didn't think of that. Uh, I don't know. I but no, I don't know. I'm trying to think like what what would be the fact because it's got to be something you can like compete for. And can be won over. Um, 
I, I don't know if it's like some deities watching both worlds and decides which like which piece of each world it likes the best and flings it into a blender and presses the, the blend button and just sees what happens or well, maybe it has to be something uh, like when they're when these two worlds are competing they are aware of the main world yeah definitely and and when they're competing there are some set rules that they need to follow one of which could be uh, they have to do something that would be in character for the main world. Like, for example, if you are um, a psychotic, m- rampaging murderer, you're not going to go and suddenly give a bunch of money to charity. That would be out of character. Uh, evil side wins. And vice versa, if you're somebody who is constantly uh, working at it, volunteering for charities and helping charities, you're a very kind, loving person, you aren't going to suddenly go out and become a murderer. Yeah. And so, so if something is out of character if, if for, um, that, uh, for that person, uh, it's an instant loss. And basically what determines what is in character for this person is uh, who has, basically which side has won more times in the past. Yeah, so it kind of it, it starts it starts as birth, and like you have the little evil toddler slowly trying to steal food, and then you have the good toddler trying to share food, and some of them are taking it too are being like so overly good, and others ties it's they're so overly evil that it's the reverse ends up happening, because if you try it's almost like if you try to be too good you're gonna turn evil, and if you try to be too evil you're gonna turn good, kinda, which is an interesting concept. So now, for since you're really you're sold on your story idea, that can your story thing can still happen where you can have evil side and good side interact. But now you can also have them accidentally interacting with middle self, and that this can is cause where they become shoulder angels and shoulder devil. Well, yeah, and that I mean, but we also now have like. I don't know, like, the deity that's watching over this going, like, oh, shoot, they got loose again. Send in the brigade. <laughs> Wheel them both in. Or even, like, uh, it's the evil one gets loose and they have to send in the good one to try to balance them, or vice versa. Like, this good person is just being so overly good. They're like, send in the evil guy to bring him back into his mirror. I, okay, I, so... I kind of like the idea of the story of, like, it's the good guy that gets... Uh, release it finds his escape but now the evil guy has to go and act, bring the good guy back to the mirror to bring balance back to the world okay so yeah i had some other rules in mind as awesome. to what would determine the winner i'm up for them. i don't remember what they were no. i got too caught up on the uh <laughs> in character thing uh no. Okay. Well, I'll I'll try to help and, and think. So right now, the only rule we have is that it has to maintain in character. Um, I I don't know. Just what... kidding, think about it. both sides can be in character. Yeah. So let's say they're both in character. Then what? Yeah. What would that's... determine the action that somebody takes. Is it uh, like something that has the most significant impact on the world? Like basically keep life interesting. That could be. At the same it. time, you gotta keep in mind there are some people with very boring lives. Yeah, which. But if you think about it, like a person with a boring life, I could imagine their evil side get being the one. Like you know how uh, you always think about um, it's always the ones who the quiet ones who are the mur- mass murderers. That thing. So they live. I these... haven't heard that before. You're either, like, mentally disti- mentally unstable your entire life and everyone knows it, or you are the quiet one and then you go on, like, eventually you just snap. And that's... Okay, wait, so you got the mentally unstable people who are the murderers, and you got the quiet people who might be mentally unstable and they snap and then they're murderers. Yeah. I am very scared of every friend I have. Why? Because we're all because mentally unstable? Because all of unstable? them sound like they're murderers. Okay. Out of curiosity, which one do I fall under? Mentally unstable or the quiet one? Also, uh, don't mind my brother in the background making golem sounds. Yeesh. <laughs> just hear Alex come across the door going... 
<laughs> okay, you made a weird sound. You're the mentally unstable. <laughs> no, Alex is the mentally unstable one. He's the one making the weird noises. I'm just replicating them for your enjoyment. Okay, so Alex is the mentally unstable murderer friend that I found. <laughs> You live a boring, quiet life, and you're not fully happy with it, and your evil side is slowly trying to push to more and more extremes, eventually it that evil side might get so extreme that it actually beats the good side, and the extreme happens, and a mass murder breaks out. Oh, okay, so if, uh, it's basically if there's just tension built up from so many wins on the good side, this person... It, it, their character would be forcing themselves to keep on doing good things and it's frustrating them and it becomes too much and they're like you know what uh, I can't deal with it anymore I'm going to do an evil action yeah it starts getting point it, it's mostly though if those good things are they feel out of character for the main person but the evil has been so out of character that like the good side's always winning even though the good side's also out of character, it's not as out of character as the bad side has been. So now the main person is being forced to, like, in a job that they hate, and they have to go and do work, and they have to smile, and they have to be happy, and they have to do their best job, and they have to go home to, like, say, a family who's abusive to them, and they, they're really upset, and but they have to be nice, and they have to be kind, because the good side keeps winning, and eventually that builds up to the point where the bad side gets its one wind, but that's the time when it sets the house on fire and kills everyone ah. inside. Like, that's what happens. And so what this this world kind of explains the mental breaks in an interesting way. Like, yeah. it's just the good has been winning so long, but this is the one time it didn't, and it just happened to be a bad time. Because at some point, their character, their character desires the bad side so much that it becomes in character, and that's more so than just continuing on the little good path that they've been on. That make that they're just not un they're unhappy with their job. Because I want to note, there are a lot of people who are doing a lot of good in the world and are very happy doing that good, and they're just going to keep going on the good path, and they're not going to have the mental breakdown. I'm referring to a very specific type of people. <laughs> okay, I, you yeah, can so you can be happy doing good things. Find good things that make you happy. A similar example, not quite exact, but something that did come to my mind was. Uh, I can't think of his name. I think it ended in O from Toy Story Three, the Bear. He was Lotso. Like, you know, it's Lotso. Yeah. Lotso. 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 Yes, Lotso. That's it. Lotso Huggin. There. I've never known his full Lotso name. Lotso Huggin. I, oh, I, I, I didn't I, know that was his funny. full name. I didn't know either. <laughs> I have not seen Toy Story Three in many years. We lost the DVD for that. <sighs> Anyways, example. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, he was the good guy. He was super friendly. Everyone loved him until he got left behind. And then after that, what became in character for him was to become the villain. Yeah. Basically, after this one unfortunate thing happened to him, uh, as the clown says, something in him snapped. And he, t and, uh, he turned evil. Yeah, I and mean. Then from that point on, his evil side would have been constantly winning because from that point on, it was in character for him. Yeah, and that's something that I think is very interesting on the mirror side is like the mirror could be doing the like good or evil side could be doing something that's working for them constantly, and then all of a sudden, you know, because there's other people in this mirror dimension who are also interacting, all of a sudden another circumstances occurs, and what they were originally doing for this person is now no longer working. Like, say they, uh, they've they been doing all this evil stuff, but then they meet someone, and now their desires change from, like, wanting to do evil stuff to wanting to, like, impress and befriend this person. All of a sudden, they're not going to want to be doing that evil stuff, and the good mirror might be able to be like, Ah! Chance! I can stop you now! And they will jump on that and slowly maneuver them back into the good side. It's just a constant battle, and I think it's... It, this feels like just a fun psychological book. Like, where you really dive deep into, like, what's good and what's evil and how they interact with each other in your head in a way that's a bit more complex than just devil and angel telling you what's bad and what's evil. Because these guys aren't doing what's fully evil and what's fully good. They're, they're in the gray. Both mirrors are playing in the gray, 
just in the hopes of slowly bringing them to a slightly better outcome or a slightly worse outcome than the other side wants. I'm going to have to include the Kronk, Shoulder Devil, and Shoulder Angel in the thumbnail. I mean, okay, so, they're an interesting example, actually, of, like, that playing more in the gray area. Because at some point, don't they both, like, just team up and say, actually, let's just do this. And they both agree at some point, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, there are some points where they, they uh, do come into a bit of agreement. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's, like, uh, with Yzma. They're like, um, she's terrible the, to you. I yeah, agree. He's like, yeah, it's like uh, the de- uh, the uh, shoulder devil is like, oh, let's go uh, hurt her, and then um, the shoulder ranger is like, I can't remember the exact line. It was something like, uh, remember, the the, uh, the wicked from above shall receive their just reward or something like that. And then they look up and there's like a chandelier or something, and they're like, oh, that'll work, and drops it on her. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I I've watched this movie relatively recently, but yeah, yeah. Like, and that's that's just the thing, like... And, and that's kind of the good example, like, his... Uh, Kronk's goal in this thing is to escape his situation and his not-so-nice boss. And now both sides are trying to figure out how to escape that, si- that, that situation. One wanting to do it a nicer way, one wanting to do the evil way. Obviously, in this example, I feel like the evil won out in that they dropped a chandelier on her. Versus just, like stop putting in their resignation and running for it, which I feel would have been the nicer way to do it, but, you know. Yeah, I think that the uh, shoulder rage of that scenario was like, yeah, it's not exactly good, but it is the literal version of what I've just said, so let's go with it. Yeah, why not? Let's let's go. But, yeah, I look at that. Uh, I guess that's our, our movie recommendation for the week. It's Emperor's New Groove. Go watch that very good movie so is Kronk's New Groove like that is I have not seen that one in forever (gasps) okay I thought you you were gonna say you hadn't seen it like at all no I've seen it I just haven't seen it it, since I was like 13 (laughs) how long is it like when it first came out (laughs) if you wanna see a more morally straight character in this universe have a movie it's Kronk like Cusco had like no morals at all at the start, at least at the start of the movie. Uh, Kronk is a very nice guy, and he makes some mistakes, and he's trying uh, to fix them. Yeah. And it's a it's a great movie. It's a great sequel. Like, yeah. To, I, like, I remember like I I I mean I was younger. I remember not hating the movie, but not being like it's staying in my mind for all eternity type thing, but it might mean I just need to rewatch it when I'm the age to appreciate movies more. So, yeah, I mean, it's um, not like, it's not like it's a perfect, oh my gosh, this is the most wonderful movie ever sort of thing. But no. as far as Disney sequels go, this was pretty good. Nice. <laughs> but I, it's good enough that I've rewatched it multiple times. Look, I just got done watching all the Disney movies. I'm not ready to dive into sequels. <laughs> Oh, yeah, you didn't count the sequels for that well, No, because they are made by a different studio. All the sequels. Okay, little... Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, I guess, a little bit of a plug here. Uh, go check out Casey's channel, where she made a video covering all 60 of the Disney movies. I watched them all in order. I had yes. to sit through Donald Duck doing some weird stuffs to some Latin American women. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to hear all about that, that's also, I want to know, Isaac's channel is also linked in the description. We've got both linked there. Uh, if it's not, it's not linked, it's only linked in YouTube, but not on our uh, actual podcast links, but if you type in Star Strikes My Little Pony, Isaac's channel will pop up, and if you type in Black Moonlight, either like Hypixel or uh, PCP Survival, it'll show up then. Or Ooblets. Ooblets is the big one for me. If you type in Black Moonlight Ooblets, my channel will show up. Actually, I think my channel's at a point where you can just type in Star Strike, and it's uh, like the top uh, result now. I think mine's top result now, too. It's just there's Ooh. still like two or three others right underneath it, so it could be easy to get confused. We are so off topic. We always are. People We've are been here going for off topic for what the past five minutes or yeah, more. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's blame the emperor's new groove. That's what that's what set it off. Anyways, uh, we were thinking about other ways in which they can win. Uh, the good side could win over the evil, or evil side over the good side. 
Okay, so what if there were if they actually worked together to achieve to try and achieve uh, a goal in a somewhat evil, somewhat good, like morally gray manner? Yeah, I guess if both mirrors decide to match themselves up, that that means there's only one choice for that person to make. And it's that okay. kind of choice. I mean, and I guess that could explain, you know when it seems like there's this really difficult decision you may have to make in life, and yet you're so sure you're going to do this no matter what anyways? Like, this seems like it should be so difficult. And yet you're like, no, I'm doing this though, and I'm, I'm certain of this, and you do it. That's that's what that situation is. For me, it was like going to universe, picking much university I go to. It seemed like it should be a really difficult decision, and like my alignment should have been torn and stuff. But at the end of the day, it was really easy, and I knew exactly what I was doing. It's it's kind of like that. I feel like good good example. Except I don't think that uh, choosing one university or the other is inherently evil. Yeah, but at this... Yeah, I mean, it depends. One could have been evil to my bank account. <laughs> okay, so something I just uh, thought about. What e. if these uh, two different sides, the two different mirrors, they wanted to achieve a certain goal, but they couldn't do it without the other? Like, like for example, uh, the evil side can pretty much only do evil things. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, and then the good side can pretty much only do good things. But the thing that the evil side wants to happen requires a good action in this instance. And the good side might do the same thing, where might want a certain future action, future scenario to play out a certain way. But right now, the evil side needs to win. Um. So at that point, you could have the, like, one just throws the match or whatever, but what if throwing the match was not allowed? Well, the, so, how, but then how would you know if they were throwing the match? You're saying, like, they have to give an example of the good side and the bad side. Like, an example has to be given. Like, they can't just not do nothing. Is that what you mean by that? Yeah. Well, I could even be, like... like an obvious, really... If it's, like, an obvious, really dumb uh, thing that you know would never win or is out of character perhaps for that uh, mirror side, then they would also be able to tell you're throwing the match, stop it. Well, what punishment do you get? Is you that just like... Not, uh, are you just not allowed to participate and the evil side wins by default for the next several rounds? Or and is so it just anything... that the per- both sides lose and the person doesn't do anything? Ooh, I like that idea. Because, you know, that but, happen- yeah. that happens a lot. You get a tough decision and you sit there and you're like... Ah. Oh, so, this this explains the people who, are, who like, uh, they just sit on their couch all day, every day, eating Cheetos and potato chips and watching Netflix. They got both sides constantly throwing the match because they're lazy, and so that's all they do with their life. Yeah. And then, eventually, that becomes that person's character trait and, like, what they want to do with their life. And all of a sudden, when you try to... When they both, it takes both sides even like agreeing, let's get out of this. It becomes more difficult than they thought, because they still have to be in character now. Now all of a sudden, instead of like they were gonna do this huge thing and like get this dream job and change the world for either the worse or better, depending on your point of view, they're now ha- sitting there like, okay, let's get him to brush his teeth today. <laughs> yeah. Shall we use the devil's floss? Or angel touch toothpaste. <laughs> yeah, yeah, stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> Just like getting the person out of the house is a huge accomplishment, and at this point, they're like, "I don't care if it's to go steal for someone or something. Just get him out of the house. <laughs> Do something." Like maybe it be, and a good guy can even be like, even if he does end up leaving the house to go and steal, maybe I can make him feel bad about it later. And so that he starts doing good or returns it or whatever. Yeah, I'll get him out of the house tomorrow to give it back. Moving his butt. (laughs) Yeah, and he'll just, we can just, he'll become this weird person who steals money and then feels bad about it and then returns it the next day. And at least he's getting exercise. (laughs) (laughs) So I'm assuming then uh, the good mirror and the bad mirror can, uh, they can communicate with each other. Yes, I'd say that like in between events, or at least like main events, because 
things like uh, driving down the road. I don't think that they would be competing in that instance. Oh, that's true, yeah. Also, that's when uh, you're that, thinking the most, like you're just off. Yeah, you're not like, but even if you're thinking, you're not like choosing, do I ram into the guy in front of me, or, or do I cut off the guy in front of me and be a jerk, or do I be a nice guy and, uh, I don't know, follow a guy who I'm guessing is going to be low on gas so I can pump his gas for him. I was thinking, I I, more like you, uh, you stop to let someone in. Which is something I do yeah. and annoy the people behind me, but you know what? <laughs> I only do like, it when there's a red light. But even even then, like in most cases, uh, when you're driving, you're not choosing between good and evil. I mean, also, wouldn't they? I almost feel like these uh, these dimensions kind of have the ability to pause time, because like a situation occurs, and then both of them have to think up what they're gonna yes. do. They both have to act it out, and then the decision is then made. Like, there is a stall between them d- doing what they think would work and what actually happens. Okay, so the time god peoples have an hourglass, and when it t- comes time to pause this person's life, they just flip the hourglass on its side, and he stops. Yeah. And it's like, okay, time to go and compete. I mean, or it could just be as simple as, like... It just stops. Like, it doesn't need... I mean, at this point, we have two dimensions that are deciding the fate of the world and competing for it. Like, do we really need an exclamation for why? Especially because I, I, this, I would say if this was, like, a high fantasy or scientific world, I would say you'd need that exclamation. But this isn't. This is a psychological world where its main purpose is to dive into the ideas of good and evil and they're competing with for your attention. And at that point, when you start talking about details like oh this is how they make time stop or this is how the mirrors work or this is how they interact or this is why this is actually real you actually end up hurting the story more so than helping it because at that point you start distracting from its purpose okay so yeah basically you're focusing less on the purpose and the message and everything and the idea and you're going more towards look at this cool thing I made yeah so, you know, some th- there are times where I feel like less con- le- less context is more, and this feels like the story where that's the case. Where you, you have this cool thing that's happening, and since it's such a psychological thing, nobody's actually going to care how it works, because they just want to focus on why what it's doing. You, you have more yeah. leeway, I guess, would be another way to explain it. You've got more room to not explain things. As long as the story's interesting. If the story's not interesting, then, like, people will criticize the heck out of why this isn't working or, and stuff. If the story's not interesting, go ahead and add the hourglass. Maybe it'll become interesting. Maybe. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if you're struggling with a story, add elements and try to make it make more sense for you. Also, having those elements, they might just be useful for you when you're telling the story, even if you don't add them in. Because I know for, for me, when I'm writing a story and I have a new element, I need to just personally know how that element works in this world and stuff. I might not add it to the story, but I, per- I just feel better knowing that this is, this is how this works. I know that if I'm in like some interview and the book gets popular and people ask me the question of how this works, I have an answer. But like in the story, it wasn't needed at that time. Yeah, I mean, I, I personally generally try to make sure that everything makes sense. Like it also, it's like if somebody has a question that's raised, generally there will be an answer somewhere in the book. Like even if it's just for like one line, it is explained. Yeah. So it's not like a plot hole or anything. Like for example, I, I just had a, a, a an experience with this earlier today, where I was watching the first episode of The Mandalorian, and in that episode, there's a bounty hunter droid. Uh, who gets shot repeatedly one time by a machine gun I'm pretty sure there's multiple shots to the head and uh, it's fine it's still able to get up walk around no problem but then all it takes is one blast from the Mandalorian to its head and it's down that's the sort of thing where I'm like uh, you gotta explain like maybe the head is weaker or the gun uh, is more powerful or something. I think it's uh, the fact that it was point liked. blank. Like, because he yeah. did it, he was there, and he <laughs> shot him, and at that point, you have all the... Because, pa- you know, when you shoot... It's like a normal gun. I don't know why we're expo- 
tangent. If you shoot a normal gun point blank, uh, it will cause more damage than if you are like a couple feet away and you shoot. Yeah. So pretty much, if you think, I guess the rule for for explaining things is if you think it's gonna hinder their story not to know, then add it in. But if you think it's gonna hinder the story for them to know or like slow down the story, then don't add it in. Because at the end of the day, a story is about the story. And if it's not helping the story, then it shouldn't just it just shouldn't be there. Yeah, there are some things that should definitely be left unexplained and left a mystery. I think, uh, the and I think, ta- world yeah, in Avatar. Yeah, and in this case, I yeah, think the how they is- stop time is not important. Just the fact that they yeah. have these competitions is the fact that these competitions are how the competitions work, like the rules to the competitions, how they win. That stuff is extremely important in this world. And that stuff should be fleshed out better than we're doing right now. Because we're not doing great. But, you know, we're doing okay. But things like how they're stopping the time or how these competitions even came into being, I don't think is important. Because the story is about the competitions. And how the good and evil are interacting with each other and trying to... Try, both trying to reach the same goal, but by the means that better fits their personal alignments. Yeah, or they could even be trying to like achieve two totally separate goals, uh, and it's just like yeah, each one wants a different outcome, so they're trying to take two different routes. True. You know, one wants them to take this job, one wants them to take the other, and the only way they do that is to slowly push one towards one way or push them to the other, and you know, and then they both have to be careful because the last thing they want is an indecisive person who doesn't do anything at all. Because then that co- then they both no one wins and I feel like the both sides kind of have this feeling they'd almost rather the other person win than both lose. Yeah. Like they might be like, yeah, my person was this mass serial killer. I failed miserably being the good person, but at least he did something. Yeah. <laughs> Which is a horrible way Better to than think. The potato chip guy. Yeah, so pretty much, like, both their ideas is like, i rather this guy be a serial killer than be lazy. Their biggest fear is a lazy, per- they get stuck with a lazy person. But it's also yeah, something we- that happens a lot. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Laziness is how uh, you lose. Yeah, an example of uh, something, that, going back to what we were talking about a moment ago, an example of something that should be left unexplained is Avatar The Last Airbender's spirit world. Yeah. Uh, because the mysteriousness of it all is what makes it interesting. Yeah. Uh, but whereas something like uh, Bending, that gets very well explained and we know exactly how it works because that's like a tool that all the characters are using and, and so it makes sense to have like that part explained to us while the uh, spirit world is sort of this realm of the unknown. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how it works. You don't know where to find the face stealer and uh, how exactly he works. And You have some idea of how he works, but not totally. Like, everything... Uh, it works really well. Avatar is great. Yeah. I mean, we say this pretty much every week. So, those who have Avatar and their true. bingo cards, congratulations. I feel like Avatar, you know the bingo card? Avatar's the center one, that free one. You're just, like, almost yeah. guaranteed to get it. And then we have a bunch of others that might make it, like Harry Potter and My Little Pony and Star Wars is one that pops up a lot. Disney movies gets its own little... We should make a bingo card, just for fun. Uh, yeah, we could, like, just see how often everything yeah. pops up as examples. Yeah. We don't, we don't usually get more than, like, three examples. True, that's we? a good point. It's a very sad bingo card, because it's just one line, and we <laughs> always hit it every day. <laughs> that Lord of the Rings in there. Oh, yeah, yeah, we could throw Lord of the Rings. That one gets... Uh, a Han Christian Anderson pops up quite a bit, too, So because he's my favorite. Like Narnia? Narnia does hop in quite a bit. Uh, yeah. I almost gave Narnia as an example earlier when we were talking about the dragons and the postal <laughs> thumbs and everything, and then I didn't. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't... Yeah. I've we've given Narnia as an example a couple times. We are. How long have we been off topic this time around? 
I don't, I think it's because this world. I think is, we developed this world. Yeah, I think part, like, I think it's because this is just a simple. It's a cool idea. It's a fun one to build, but it is a simple world, and it's definitely one which. Yeah, it's a simple concept. You have these two mirror dimensions, and they're fighting for the main one. Like, there's not much more to build off of that. And yeah, they can freeze time, so that way they can compete properly. And they can have discussions when you're lost in thoughts, and they're the reason why sometimes people snap, or why some people become indecisive. And, you know, you get to explain why people are people in a new way. It's our version of Inside Out! Yeah! I kind of, I almost like this version better than the in the idea of Inside Out, like the idea oh. that our well, I like the idea that our morals are what's competing for us instead of just our emotions being our driving force. But that is where we're going to be ending it this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed our little dive into some mirror dimensions, and we will be back next week with uh. A special April's first episode. I hope you guys are as excited for it as we are, but we will see you then. Bye!